Hey everybody, it's Dave Dugdale, learningvideo.com. So I'm gonna show you, it's like, if you go to a close-up shot like this and then you go far out, I'm just gonna stop right here. You can see where it says Rock Creek. It's not very noticeable. Um, this is the way I used to do it in um, Resolve. Um, it's called, I think it's called Match Move. Didn't work all that great and it didn't, wasn't able to carry a translucent a layer, even though I was able to make it somewhat translucent. I had to kind of go around and you know, the girl wasn't perfect. Um, but now that fusion is inside of Resolve, I can do something like this. When I go from like this far shot, I can add in, oops, sorry, let me do that again. I can add in text like they do in the Olympics, kind of a translucent layer, you know, it's got the flag and their name kind of thing. And so when they go from uh, close-up shot to the wide shot, they can find out what lane the swimmer is that they want to pay attention to. So what I'm going to do is show you how to do this with a planar tracker within Fusion and not doing it with Match Move like we have here within Resolve um, because that's kind of the old way. I don't even think you can do it anymore because I think they took one of the things away because I tried it. I was like, ah, oh, I can't do it anymore. So I'm like, okay, I'll learn how to do it in Fusion. So what I'm going to do is recreate this one right here. I'm going to go in... Um, and click on this actual clip that we have here. It's like C0006. Um, go in the Fusion tab. I'm gonna go ahead and just nuke all this stuff out. Uh, anyway, so what I do is actually turn these off because when you go into Fusion tab, um, it'll go to those top two tracks. I guess it goes priority on the top tracks. So what we're gonna do is the bottom track, just turn those off when we click on the Fusion tab, then we've got it connected. Um, I've gone ahead and said show tile picture so you can actually see it which is great. So I've got a number of steps. Um, I'm gonna kind of follow along with the steps um, so you can too, and I'll put these all down below of how I did it. So basically I said from Resolve, just click on the track that you want. That's what we just did. Um, you should have the background and the output connected, and you can see the background is connected to the output, um, which is great. And the next step is bring in your text, like could be a text plus, or in this case, I'm gonna be bringing an actual graphic in from Photoshop, and it's actually a PDS, P, PSD file, I think it says. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm just gonna go up and say show uh, tile picture, and then that'll actually update here in a second. And the next step, because um, if I don't follow the steps, I'll probably get this wrong, um, add planar tractor. Uh, so we're gonna do a shift spacebar, shift spacebar, and you can see I did a search for it. I'm gonna say okay, it brings it in. I don't want to connect it to that, so I'm just going to disconnect. And I don't want that, so I'm just going to connect this to here for now. But I don't want to do it this way. You might actually start off doing it this way, and you're like, oh, why doesn't it work? One of the problems I ran into is like things were behind uh, other layers, and I couldn't see what was going on. I was like, why am I doing this wrong? Um, so what you want to do is right click, not click, left click, but if you're a PC guy like me, right click, and then bring it over, and then release, and then you want to go to background contains the region to track and that's what we're doing here and you actually see the pool right there that's the the one what we want to track so we're going to say we'll click on that and right here down below you're going to see two dots we want to click on the right dot and what that'll do is bring this up into this window right here and i'm actually going to zoom out by you control you have to press the control i'm gonna to have to redo my shortcuts on this because i don't like the way it's set up right now all right so now let's go on to our um, cheat sheet here. And so we did that background, put it on the first frame. So let's go ahead and you can see right here, <clears throat> we're not starting at frame zero. And this is something that I ran into and I couldn't figure out what was going on. I was like, what is happening? So what I want you to do is go all the way back and I'm just gonna use my left arrow until it goes blank and then right until I've got that first frame that I can actually see it. Then up here in the planar tracker window, what I want you to do is take your tracker, not point, but we're gonna to go to hybrid point area. And then right here, this is what used to screw me up. See where it says reference time? If you try to track it right now, it's gonna come up with an error. It's gonna say, you're not on the right frame, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, why not? So what you wanna do here is just click set. And that brings it to frame 2307. Um, so it's parked right on the white run and it can start tracking on that particular frame. So let's go back to our cheat sheet. The next step is, so we did the uh, hybrid point arrow. We, now we have to draw an, uh, around an object to track. This thing does an amazing job. This guy that I want to track is in lane seven, so I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. no, actually it's six. He's right here. 
Um, and what I'm gonna do is, the, there's some high contrast. I'm gonna zoom in, uh, and then I'll just kind of move this over here. I'm pretty sure it's this lane. If it's not, it's not that big of a deal for this demonstration. What I do is click, and then I'm gonna click down here. So I'm drawing around those high contrast objects. And the way I built the um, this particular graphic is I built it before, and it just aspect ratio wise, I knew I was gonna go like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm just gonna click here, click here, and click here. It doesn't have to be super accurate, but basically you don't wanna be inside of it, you wanna be outside it so it has all that nice contrast with the lane lines. And then um, let's go just double check my cheat sheet here. Uh, we did the zero reset reference point. I'm going to track forward. So we're going to click on this button right here and just let it do its thing. And you can see there's a lot of dots and stuff. You'll know if you got it wrong if um, it just doesn't start tracking and goes wonky on you. And then you might have to try something with a higher contrast. But even this, you can see it's tracking like the that kind of lane line below the water to the surface, that dark blue. And that's even tracking that stuff, which is pretty amazing. Um, and it does a, a great job. And this, my computer's pretty fast. It's got uh, 16 cores and I've got it overclocked. So this is gonna be done in just a few seconds. And again, this tutorial, if you want to call it a tutorial, it's mostly just for me for the next time I do this, I'm like, oh, how did I do that? And I'll just go back and watch this video. <laughs> All right, it's done. So I'm just going to bring it back to that first frame. And we're just going to take a look at the that track. And sure enough, it looks great. I'm just going to stop it right there. All right, so now we're going to connect the graphic up, which is my PSD file that I made in Photoshop. I'm going to right click like I did before. I'm going to drag it down. And what I want to do here is I want to do corner pin number one. And what that's going to do is allow me to put the graphic in here by by the corners because it's laying down on a surface again this is not there's some other stuff out there other tutorials that can, can explain point tracking much better than what i'm about to do so what i'm going to do is i'm going to zoom out a little bit let's control and wheel yeah like that and then i'm going to go from track i'm going to go to corner pin and that's when we're going to see our graphic appear and here we go and there it is um, let's zoom out a little bit more so you guys can see what's going on here and I'm just gonna go ahead and start really just roughly putting it in place and then we'll zoom in uh, to where I think it's supposed to be. And then let's zoom in. And to make this look realistic, I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna put this like right here where the black ends, right here. And I'll put this one right here where the black ends, about right there. Um, and then we'll do, I don't know, maybe this one right here and maybe this right here. So um, that line, that lines up. So it should look correct once I um, hit play. So let's go ahead and hit, bring, bring it back to the beginning. Didn't have to be on the beginning where I set it, but let's go ahead and watch it. And there it is. He's coming into right there. And then we're not quite done because now we have to connect this up to the output. And it doesn't matter if you do the right or left click when you do that one. And let's see anything else. Corner pin, uh, align corners. And this was actually a good video that I watched. Um, he helped me out on uh, this particular YouTube video. Maybe I'll put a link down below so you can see it if you run into other issues. So that's basically it. You just go basically go back to here. And now then when we go this distance shot, boom, you can see the person's name like that. Now, I could, I'm noticing one thing, it's just, it comes on so suddenly, it would be nice to actually do this in such a way where this um, doesn't appear from zero to 100% opacity. If it kind of ramped up a little bit, it wouldn't be so maybe sudden. Um, that might look a little bit better. I don't know how to do that. I'm sure there's a way to do that by going into the Fusion tab and that keyframing something like a opacity adjustment that we would put probably in the middle of this. I don't know how to do that. We'll save that for another tutorial for somebody else to do. <laughs> All right, that's pretty much it. Again, this video is mostly for me in the future, um, so I know how to do it. Um, and again, like I showed before over here, like on this one, this one was done with the match move and resolve, and that's about as good as I could do back then. But now, um, within Fusion, we can be much more creative in the type of stuff that we do. So that's pretty much it. Hope that helps somebody out there. Um, 
I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.